Hello my little gemstones. In today's video, I'll be painting this cute pink portrait trying out this fun round watercolor paper pad. This pad is by Paul Rubens and has a hot press finish, which means it's smooth, and I was pleasantly surprised with the quality. I bought it quite a while ago on a bit of an impulse since I had never seen anyone use it before, so naturally I was very curious. And for those of you who might not know already, I typically prefer a cold press watercolor paper, which has a little bit of texture, so I really didn't know what to expect from this painting experience. Since this was my first time trying out this paper, I decided to keep it simple, so I only used two watercolors, Quinacridone Magenta by Daniel Smith and Lavender by Shinhan. I actually love painting in these really limited color palettes because it really shows how much range you can achieve with so little. It serves as a nice reminder that you don't need to have dozens of colors in order to make decent or interesting artwork. And especially for those of you who are, you know, on a budget, it also kind of reminds you guys as well that if you want to upgrade to artist grade and pay that little bit extra for something of a higher quality, you can just go for a couple tubes rather than spending hundreds of dollars on an entire set. So since today's painting process is quite simple and straightforward, I thought that this was a good opportunity to chat to you guys about a topic that I get asked a lot about which is how I balance my art practice with a day job. Now, I feel like I talk about this a lot, but it seems that not everyone knows this, but prior to quarantine a couple months ago, I worked a retail job on top of all of my art stuff. This often surprises people because I think when you have a certain amount of followers on social media or have a certain level of output, people just assume that this must be your full-time job. For me, this is unfortunately not the case, and I'm sure many of you are in the same boat. Whether you work a day job, are in school, have kids to take care of, etc., there are many different scenarios that take up our time and away from our given art practices. Now, I'm going to share with you guys how I personally have managed in the past in my own particular situation. I know that everyone's circumstances are going to be different, but I hope that maybe hearing my experience can help uh, guide you in adapting to your own situation and maybe how to cope when things are getting difficult. Like I mentioned earlier, up until about mid-March, I had been working a day job. Specifically, I was working retail and have been working retail for many, many years. The store I work at had temporarily closed due to the pandemic, so we were all quote unquote laid off for the time being. This of course is not my calling and I only do it in order to have a stable income to help me pay for rent and other living expenses. These past couple of months has really given me a taste of what my life could look like if I was a full-time artist. And I gotta say, it's been really, really rewarding. But unfortunately, businesses are starting to open back up and I could be called back to my work pretty much at any given moment. So with this prospect looming over me, it got me thinking about how I will have to go back to my previous balancing act of day job and art career. So for many years after I graduated from college in graphic design, I was typically working nearly full-time hours in retail to make ends meet. But then as the years passed, little by little, I found ways to make income from my art. And then finally, a couple of years ago, I felt comfortable enough financially to reduce my hours at retail and just work part-time hours. As an artist, there are tons of ways to make money, whether you're selling at local art markets, comic and anime conventions, having an online shop, YouTube, freelance client work, personal commissions, the list goes on. And while of course I do not enjoy working retail and customer service, the huge benefit of this job for me is that the hours are flexible and the job itself is not incredibly hard. This is the main reason why I chose to stay at this retail job and I think is how I've been managing to do as much as I did with my art practice. 
The flexibility allows me to take chunks of days off when I needed to attend a comic convention or if I had a pressing deadline or just like a really big project. And this is definitely not something I would have been able to do if I worked a nine to five salary job. Also, while there definitely can be stressful and tiring moments working retail and customer service, such as being on your feet for eight hours a day or having a particularly awful customer, generally retail doesn't take too much of a mental or physical toll on you as some other jobs would. And that allowed me a little bit of that mental and creative space to continue working on my own stuff when I would get home. And like I mentioned before, the past couple of years, I had been working part time. So instead of working five days a week, I was working three. And that also gave me a little bit more time to dedicate to my art practice. However, that being said, balancing both my retail job with my art career has always been difficult and a lot of hard work. And while the job was certainly flexible, I unfortunately had a different schedule and the hours of the day that I'd work would change from week to week. So sometimes I would work week t weekends, sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes I'd be done at 5 p.m., sometimes I'd be done at 8 p.m. The irregularity definitely made it difficult to have any semblance of routine and basically forced me to adapt to whatever I was dealt with that week. Also, it may also be important to note that even before quarantine, my social life was fairly minimal anyways, and I didn't really do any or much extra activities. So most of my hours were basically spent working, whether it be retail or on my art. So basically my main piece of advice is that you have to find any pocket of time and use it to your advantage. Time management and prioritizing your tasks, while it, it is difficult, it is essential to staying productive. At the beginning of last year, I began keeping a bullet journal. Now, I don't use it for scrapbooking, journaling, or any of that aesthetic decorative stuff you often see on YouTube. My bullet journal is purely to keep track of deadlines, art and video ideas, and what tasks that I need to complete week to week and for that month. When I was working my day job, I would write down the hours and days that I had to work for retail. And then from there, I would map out all the other tasks that I needed to complete around that schedule. I am the type of person who prefers to have long stretches of time set out when I know that I wanna draw and paint that day. I don't like having any time constraints to worry about, which is often why when people ask how long something takes me to paint or create, I have no idea because I wasn't paying attention to the time. I just like to zone out and just work endlessly. But that wasn't always the case because of the schedule that I was dealt with that week. So if I could, I would work out that the days that I didn't have to work retail, those would be the ones that I would dedicate to actual painting. And then for the odd hours of the day, like before or after working retail, I would try to delegate those times to the, you know, the not as exciting tasks like answering emails, printing orders, editing videos, etc. And that's kind of how I try to map out my week. But of course, most weeks would be busier than others and that's just not how it always happened and you have to sacrifice your free time to make things happen. There would be cases when I'd be packing up shop orders until one in the morning, or I'd be making my Instagram post on the streetcar or the subway or hand cutting stickers for an upcoming convention on my lunches. You'd be surprised at how creative you can get if you delegate your tasks in an advantageous way. You would also be surprised at how much more free time you might have if you spend less time watching TV or on social media or playing video games. And now none of these things are bad and it's very important to have a balance and to treat yourself once in a while but unfortunately, if you really want something, you do have to be diligent and make sacrifices and work really hard. Even if it's just taking that, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour that you would have spent watching a TV show and spent it doing a new study in your sketchbook or something like that. It's just finding those like little, little pockets of time, even if it's not a huge amount of time. 
I'm often asked how I'm able to have such a high output, aka producing new artwork, videos, merchandise, maintaining my social media, etc. And I guess it's all really just a controlled chaos. <laughs> Even trying to explain this to you guys, I'm not even sure if it makes any sense or if I just sound like a crazy workaholic. Even saying workaholic doesn't quite sound right because most of the time I feel like I could be working harder or more efficiently. But discussing my work ethic also reminds me of why having art block just really isn't an option for me anymore. Dealing with art block is another question that I receive a lot, and I think I've reached a point where I just cannot afford to be in an art block. I have to be productive all the time whenever I can. If I'm not in the mood, I'll just push through it, and if I'm having a particularly hard time creating, then I'll move on to other non-creative tasks like editing a YouTube video or packing up shop orders. Again, it's really all about optimizing your time and energy whenever and wherever you can. And before we go, I would like to say that while this all sounds really crazy, <laughs> I push myself because being a full-time artist is my ultimate goal and it's what I want. I'm sure like many of you, I'm always so curious about how other artists that I admire came to do their art as a full-time career. And more often, than, more often than not, a lot of the stories that I have come across, more or less, it's basically one day the person quit their full-time job and jumped right in. And with the help of living with their parents, living with their partner, or some kind of financial support, they were able to make that transition. I don't have that option. It's just me. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you are in that position as well. So my mindset is if I don't seize every opportunity or make the most of any time that I have, then I feel like all of these agonizing years working customer service will be for nothing. So being able to support myself solely on my illustration and content creation is truly what drives my motivation. As well, I cannot thank you guys enough for following along with me on this crazy journey and your encouragement and support really does help keep me going and I am just so grateful to you guys. Basically, to summarize, make lists to help keep you organized, optimize any time that you have to be productive, and continue to remind yourself of your goals and why you want to pursue your art practice. Of course, if that is what you want to pursue. <laughs> So I hope that this very, very rambly video was helpful in some way. I know that it was very chaotic and not organized whatsoever, but that pretty much sums up the way that I work in general. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I hope that you guys have an amazing day and stay tuned next week for some very exciting news that I have. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!